Welcome to a bonus edition of the Throwing Bagels podcast. I am Chris Daglas, and I'm joined, as always, by Kevin Mooney. Kevin, how are you? I am great, Chris. Yourself? I'm doing very well. And, uh, of course, Jason Hamo. Jason, how you doing? I'm doing fabulous, Chris. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, Jay. Thanks for asking. Appreciate it. Uh, so, what an episode we have here lined up for you. Over the weekend, WTOP, which is the Oswego Run television station, did the first ever women's broadcast of a men's hockey game. And we have two of the co-producers that did the broadcast, Jolie Santiago, who was the WTOP vice president of finance, and Natalie Barden, who was the WTOP news director. Ladies, welcome. Hi, thanks for having us. Hi there. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your uh, we appreciate you coming on and, and talking about this uh, very historic moment in, in the school's history and, and, of course, the WTOP's history as well. Uh, I guess we'll start off with, uh, you know, what, you know, not only was this broadcast very special for, for, you know, the two of you and, uh, TOP's history, but it, it also was a thousandth win for Oswego's men's hockey team in the history of their program. What does that mean to each of you? Um, <laughs> so many things. I have to say that, uh, this whole broadcast meant the world to me. I think that once I heard about it, I wanted to get involved and, Natalie got involved with me and I was like, this is exactly what I want. Um, two ladies that are very strong and really a big part of WTOP. Uh, we wanted to take over and try and see what we could do with this. And I think that it also being the 1000th win, we also found out like the week before the broadcast, we were like, we're going to make it even better now. Like there's just so many things, so many elements that you can add once you hear about those like little pieces that you can tell the story better. You try and implement it into the broadcast any way you can. And that's what we did. And we're really proud of that. Yeah, that was so exciting. We found out like midweek that this was going to be uh, possibly the 1000th program win. Um, and we were thinking that it, it would be pretty likely, but I didn't want to bank on it. Um, so I, our uh, director of the broadcast, her name is Mia Dirks, she had already made us a ton of like personalized, really cool graphics and like bump videos. And I frantically texted her and I was like, please make us more. Because we just found out about this. <laughs> so she uh, threw some full screen graphics together really quick and they ended up being a really cool. Um, another little storyline that we could add to the broadcast. So it was just, it was nice to work together like that. And just for the record, it was Oswego beating Brockport. I believe it was 5 1. It was the final. So uh, an excellent, excellent game to call. Yeah. Yeah. Battle of Green and Gold. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so just like the Grammys. The other night it was it was ladies night all the winners right all the all the all everyone was was a woman at the broadcast we've seen the past few days many messages came through on social media lauding you know the job that you that you guys did and marking you know this specific moment what was it like to receive messages from so many different alumni male and female but especially the female alumni you know that a maybe never had a chance to do this because they were told they're they're you know they're a woman and they don't know sports or you know they don't you know it's not their place or anything like that. What did it mean to you guys to see all that? That was so exciting. Uh, I I don't think either of us really expected this to get so much attention. At first, we were kind of gatekeeping that it was happening, like kind of keeping it to ourselves. I don't think we were really going to make much noise about it. Um, and then one of our professors reached out to us and was like, "You need to." kind of get this out there like this is a big deal and we were like oh wait yeah this is a really big deal um and then you know hearing from all those alumni I mean we had those personalized video messages throughout the broadcast that we cut together and would play that was just so thrilling I think for the both of us because it's all these different women from different eras of WTOP we had women from the 80s women from the early 2000s women from as early as last year and they were all just equally as thrilled about this and then the social media messages that was a whole other thing it, that was just so exciting as well what do you yeah. think I think when Natalie just said it was perfect and I completely agree with that I also want to add on the reason I think why we gatekeeped it what for a bit in the beginning was because we were scared like this is a very like daunting thing to do um we're two ladies that we haven't been the biggest pe pe people in sports if that makes sense like we are a big part of the sports department but we haven't been the biggest and I think that was like our thing where we were like okay, we're not as like top, top as like the other guys in the club. So we were like, I don't know, we're scared how we're going to do it. But at the end of the day, 
we did push through and we told ourselves that we can do it. And we literally made it happen with not more research than everything. Like we were doing all the research that we could. We did everything that we honestly was in our control to make happen. And we did that. And I think that really goes to show like you could put your mind to anything as cliche as, as it would sound. It's, it's honestly true. Like you don't have to be the most perfect person at anything until you try it. Totally. We were, um, we weren't aware of this obviously. Um, and Chris saw it on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. About last <laughs> Wednesday, I think it was, and brought it to our attention. And, you know, we, we, you know, we had a really quick conversation. We're like, we got to figure something out. Um, and, you know, try to get you, get you ladies on, um, and talk to you about this. Um, but who was the professor who pushed you guys to, to, professor. you know, bring it out there? Yeah. Michael Rickey, he's our club advisor. Um, he's awesome. We've all had lots of classes with him. We're in a class with him right now. Um, just really wonderful, supportive professor. And I'm happy that he sent us that email and was like, you have to do this. It wasn't like, no, do it. It was like, not a suggestion. He was like, do it. You need to know about this. And we were like, oh, wait, yeah, they do. <laughs> so I'm glad that he gave us that little push. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a big deal. And also y'all nailed it. Like, Thank nailed you. It. it was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot because at the end of the day, we were scared. Like, yeah, <laughs> we were thinking about it all the time. Like it kept us up at night, especially the week before we could not sleep. She mentioned it to Professor Ricky. Like I've been having like bad dreams and I'm like, wait, me too. And I was just, <laughs> we're in this together. Like it's, it's so crazy. It's just so much stress. And we're scared that somebody's going to be like seeing mistakes and be like, that's why it's an all women's broadcast. And that's like the last thing we wanted. And yeah. we were like, we need to do as much as possible to prevent anybody from saying anything. But honestly, you can't stop the haters. So yeah, it's exactly. like, it is exactly. what it is. Exactly. There's always going to be haters. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to be. Exactly. You're doing something right if there's a hater. So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> When you face challenges in your life down the road, are you going to think of think back to this past weekend as motivation to keep going? Yes, immediately. Yes, because I could not have thought of doing this. I don't know, three months ago, four months ago, we started two months ago working on this. Wow. And we were like, this is going to be our thing. Like this is going to early December was our start of this. We, um, I will get into that. I'm sure of how we got, how we started everything together. But I know that ever since we started, we were gung ho about it and we were going to make it happen. And I feel like if I can do that with everything going forward in my life, I will be very successful. And I believe Natalie could say the same. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think this was kind of like pushing the limits of what we thought we could do. I mean, it was just a lot of like, you know, nerves, um, wanting to, I, at least for me, uh, like hide that from the rest of the crew, mm -hmm. um, because I knew they were nervous too. And like, we were in the leadership role, so I did not want them to mm -hmm. see any nerves at all. And I, I think we did a good job hiding it from did, them. Yeah. I think we did. I just hide <laughs> once. It's fine. But not in front of them. <laughs> well, no, in front of them. But, <laughs> them. <laughs> but it was like a nervous cry. It was a, a nervous cry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think this experience has, will definitely help in the future. Um, anytime, I think especially pushing into a male dominated space um this will be this will be a very helpful experience to look back on and be like you've done it before you can do it again no need to stress right so I mentioned at the top of the podcast that you were both the co-producer or co-producers of the broadcast uh you kind of started touching on how this idea came about how are you each named the co-producers for this broadcast I'm not too sure. <laughs> no, I, I, I do know. It's because um, Natalie and I have taken on the same amount of work in putting this production together. We were always balanced. Like no one was ever doing more than the other. And I can say that's never happened before in a group project. I've always been doing the most or I, like it's always happened that way. <laughs> like we're like that. So we understand and we get each other. So I think that's really a big point of why we were like, we're going to make sure that we're known as co-producers. I told Natalie, like, hey, if you want to call yourself just the producer and I'll call myself play-by-play, -play, no. No. And she was like, no, we're not, <laughs> not going to do that. We were both in on it from the start. So, like, it just, why, you know? Like, we both came up with, we each had a hand in every single part of the broadcast. Like, the whole pregame show, we went through block by block and came up with together. Um, it wasn't like one of us was like, hey, look at this. I just did this. And it was 10 minutes of a pregame show. It was like... 
mean, line by line, we both went through it. So it just didn't seem right. I was like, you're crazy for that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> not calling myself play by play geez <laughs> <laughs> who threw the it up on the the bulletin board saying that friday or friday february 2nd is going to be the first all all women staffed broadcast in wtop history yeah that was our sports director's idea actually um was a man uh his name is jacob bradley um and he came up with this idea which was really exciting i think for us to see as women that there was a man who was like pushing for this female representation and like believed in us that we not only could do it but like we're going to do it like early in the semester he's like yeah this is happening and we're both just like okay like let's do it we'll make it happen <laughs> we'll make it happen <laughs> uh so yeah that was initially it was his idea mm -hmm. once it started to crystallize what was was there like starting to was a waiting list developing for for women who wanted to join and be part of the crew yeah so this is the really fun part i thought um natalie and i solidified that we were going to really be taking over and natalie and i had meetings together um we spoke to Brittany karen's class of 18 she is absolutely amazing um i know she's an associate producer at espn i reached out to her because professor ricky told me that uh he she was definitely like the person to talk to about producing a hockey broadcast and i was like bingo gonna find her on linkedin found her we connected i said hey can we please have a meeting i would love to talk to you about like what you did at wtop everything with oswego hockey and so on and so forth and we scheduled our meeting and i was like natalie i think you should really come to this this would be really good for both the both of us and we both sat there i have a picture of us like oh, after yeah. the meeting and it was just such a good refreshing like moment for us because we got like such great support she gave us really the understanding of how to work this hockey broadcast from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. She was like, you need to delegate who's going to be your director and who's going to be um, your color uh, commentator. So we really wanted to focus on trying to get those people. But yeah, from there, that was the start. And uh, we put together a Google form and we sent it to all of WTOP. We were like, hi, we're having an all women's broadcast. We would love if you could participate. Please fill out the form if you're interested. And it gave like all the positions and everybody would say what position they've done at another hockey game. So we have some people that are experienced and it's kind of well balanced as well. And yeah, from there, everybody really signed up. It, it was fast. People were signing up that day. Wow. Yeah. For sure. I think before we left for winter break, which was like the second week in December, maybe we yeah. had a pretty solid idea of who would be doing what. Um, and then like the next couple of weeks, we just kind of solidified it before we sent it out to everyone and uh, made sure, you know, made some changes, made sure everyone was in the right spot. But yeah, it was exciting. Um, so I saw I saw today there was a a video of a Vimeo video posted on a, a LinkedIn and, you know, quick shots basically like a highlight video of the of the whole broadcast broadcast um and Na uh, natalie it looked like you were basically like you called yourself the you told me you were the producer but it looks like you were more like the executive producer of the of the broadcast because it looked like you had uh you were sitting in the back over there right behind and the other director in front of you and everything like that so um were you the were you basically the executive producer of the of the broadcast um i mean i guess in broadcast i would say um i was keeping everything on time kind of like kind of just saying what we were doing when like i wanted to make sure we got run throughs done in the control room so while talent was still setting up getting your mics and everything um i kind of rallied everyone in the control room it was like let's go through the top a couple times make sure that's smooth um kept everything on time was queuing talent um talking to the director about a lot um in game like in the the intermission shows are not quite as planned out i had a couple of things that I knew I wanted that I knew we'd be throwing to, uh, but the rest of it was on the fly based on what was happening in game. So just making sure I tell the director, um, the graphics, get those graphics made, our replay operator um, and audio, of course. So the mic's going to be open. Um, but yeah, so just a lot of communicating and like calling the shots of what's happening when and making sure the talent stays on time. And so we don't like it cut off. <laughs> oh, it seemed, it seemed very, uh, very seamless. Um, so you mentioned Professor Ricky. Um, did any other professors play a part, you know, in in uh, in making this this you know all broad, all women broadcast a reality, or was it strictly you know just just your advisor and that was it? Yeah. So 
Professor Loper, I feel, had a really big part in this because she's my only professor that's um, in broadcasting, also female, just like really feeling like I can go to her for anything. I love Professor Ricky, but I can't go, go to him about some of the things like just recently, I am at an internship and I was talking to Professor Loper and she was giving me like the best advice. And I was just like so grateful for her. And I kind of went to her for some advice over the winter break, but like really just she's helped me so much. So I really give credit to her for that. Not so much about the hockey broadcast itself, but overall, there's just so many professors here that I would like to thank. Um, but in terms of the hockey broadcast, I know Professor Cleland um Michael Cleland was a big help as well. He helped us with the rundown specifically. Like we just made the rundown and we were like, this is really solid. We love this. Let's get some second opinions. And we got a second opinion from him. And he gave us some tips on how to fix it up, maybe make it a little different. We took some things and we didn't take other things. So it was a good conversation that we were able to have with him. Yeah, he's great. He has a lot of uh, real world, like live sports experience. So it was great to bring in that perspective. And I want to reiterate uh, what Jolie said about Professor Catherine Loper. That woman is a god. That woman has <laughs> saved me so many times that uh, she's just like, I think she does so much without realizing how much she does. Um, she came up to me in a class and was like, thanks for shouting me out in an article about the all women broadcast. But what did I do? And I was like, what do you mean? What did you do? Like her, the, the guidance that she's given is the reason that I'm like built up to this point to mm -hmm. be able to mm -hmm. take this on. I told her that and she was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't notice it. That's the thing. She doesn't notice how amazing she is in the sense of how she helps us and students. I know other students are the same way, uh, feel the same way. So she's awesome. Shout out Professor Loper. <laughs> Have there has there been discussion about doing any other any other sports or, or doing this again in the future? Um, I mean, we're both seniors, seniors so I'm right. I think our main goal with this is to make sure that this is not the end of women signing up for live sports broadcasts, whether it be on air in the control room on a camera. So that's the big thing that we're pushing is to just keep these, uh, this high volume of women involved in our sports productions um, so that eventually we get to the point where it's not so out of the ordinary to see an all-woman perch and an all-woman uh, booth uh, of commentators mm -hmm. or an all-woman control room. We don't we want to get to the point where hopefully maybe in a couple of years, this is not such a landmark thing. We're so happy that it, this is so historic and it's getting attention, but we hope we get to the point where it's just like you see, um, you know, three men up there on the perch. It's not notable. <laughs> it's just normal. It's what happens. So that's our goal, I think. Yeah, I think that I can't believe that we did this in the first two weeks of the semester. I think that's incredible. And I think about that yeah. This, I'm, I've been thinking about that this whole weekend. Like the semester literally just started. We haven't even gotten a whole crew for news, ha have everybody for talent. Like we've had no productions yet, except for really this one and like other hockey broadcasts. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty incredible to think. I think anything can happen if by the end of the semester. We could make another one. Um, it wouldn't be maybe as historic. However, I think that it'd still be as awesome. <laughs> um, I think it'd still be just as amazing to have that. Um, and I think also... It would be really cool to see that many ladies keep staying involved in sports because that's what we've been reiterating. Like it doesn't stop here. If anything, you have to continue and keep showing up so that you feel comfortable and get other ladies involved. It's not just, you know, going to be for this broadcast. I hope it really does continue after us. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think also you mentioned the environment. So many of the women on our crew, I just kept hearing, I'm sure you heard the same. This is the most the fun, most comfortable I have ever felt here. And I don't think that's saying that there's people who actively make them uncomfortable. I don't think that's it. It's just they were surrounded by so much positive and exciting energy that they were like, oh my God, this is amazing. And they they were so genuinely happy. It was really nice to see. Jolie, what brought you to be the play-by-play -play announcer? Yeah. So um there's it's funny. I don't, I don't know. I think that I just didn't know hockey up until like last semester towards the end specifically. I saw all these hockey broadcasts going on and I'm like, I need to get more involved. I am, so I transferred in by the way. So I just came last year and I came um, to Oswego and we already had the whiteout in November. So that was my first semester and we already had whiteout. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. There's so many things going on right now, but I wanna be involved. So I'm gonna figure that out. So <laughs> the next semester in spring, I was like, 
seeing it out. Okay, I, I get this. I'm working camera. I'm working dashboard. I'm working um, video playback. You know, some of the control room positions also. And I felt like I wanted to be on air. And I wanted to be on air specifically when I saw Maddie Flood. She's was the analyst for one of uh, for the All Women's broadcast. I saw her being an analyst for one of the games. And I was like, she's doing that. And that is so incredible. I have never seen that before. And I even watched old hockey broadcasts. I had not seen that before. So um, I was just like really excited for that. And I was like, I want to do that. And I kind of pushed it off, though, until next semester, which was this past fall. And so I got involved when hockey came in the picture. I immediately went to do um, analyst. I was sideline reporter, then I became analyst. And it was like huge games that I was sideline reporter and analyst for. So I was like, I love this so much. I want to keep like moving up the ranks. And I was feeling it out. And everybody was very supportive too at WTOP, specifically Natalie. She always was like, girl, you're on the perch. You're on the, you're in the booth. Like, that's so cool. So then I became... Uh, really involved in this broadcast. I was like, I really want to be a part of this, but I really want to be play by play. And I was like, Natalie, I think I want to be play by play. <laughs> I was like, girl, please. Yes. <laughs> so I signed up, I did it. And um, I started doing play by play because of the all women's broadcast. I signed up for uh, all of the other hockey broadcasts to do play by play because I wanted to be perfect for the all women's broadcast. So that's how it kind of started. I think that it was a little longer uh, story than I thought it was, but I think that just shows that you have to start somewhere in order to keep moving up. So you had, you had had a couple of games under your belt by the time the all women's game came around. Yeah, I had exactly two. (laughs) (laughs) That's plenty sometimes. That's fine. Repetition. More than some people. Yeah, yeah, repetition. Winter, that's winter a... break kind of put a little damp in my, sure. you know, to do that. So I was studying a lot of NHL, like muting the TV and just calling like different hockey plays, like, oh, the goalie's coming in to mop up and, you know, like all the like silly stuff, just trying to give myself some con- a confidence because I love to be creative when I'm talking. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be like, and there he goes, you know, like, <laughs> let's, let's hype it up. And I think I did that also for the all women's broadcast, which I really, really like. You did. You had some great, great goal calls from Jolie. I was in the bath like, wow, all right, let's go. (laughs) Thanks, Dad. (laughs) No, coming, the three of us all did play-by-play for hockey on on radio back when we were at Oswego, and I think the broadcast was phenomenal. So uh, you should pat yourselves on the back. Absolutely. It was great. And hi, and to be honest, hockey is probably one of the toughest play-by-plays to do, like without question. Without question. Without a doubt. So, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, when I, Kevin, Kevin, I think is the only one of us who did a game. Kevin and I did it our junior year together um, on the radio because, you know, we're too old to have done it on TV because we couldn't, <laughs> we, we couldn't have done, uh, we, we, we didn't were lucky have the capability if we could have reached the, cab- the cables to get to uh, Romney Fieldhouse at the <laughs> yeah. time. So, um, um, but when I did it with Kevin, my, our junior year, my first game, was literally my first time ever doing play by play. Like I had done sideline, I had done, you know, sideline reporting for the radio for the hockey games before that, but I had never done a play by play game in my life up until that point. So, you know, getting that experience is is, you know, is huge. Mm-hmm. Sure. Totally agree. Yeah. We were Natalie, like Oh, go ahead, Chris. Your turn. You go. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie, do you normally work in the control room during hockey games or uh, do you have other positions you might work during hockey games? So it's funny you ask. Um, I had when I got to the all one broadcast, I had produced exactly one hockey game uh, before this one. But I felt very comfortable because I've produced a lot of newscasts, uh, mm-hmm. both at WTOP and kind of quote unquote, in the real world. Um, so I, w- I was pretty comfortable with the whole timing and keeping things on track. That wasn't really a, a too big of a concern, luckily, thank God, or else I would have been freaking out. Um, but in hockey games, normally um, I've done audio, I've done dashboard, um, I've done replay several times. Um, I think I've done a couple of cameras. So I've never really done, I've never done an on-camera role for hockey. I've done on-camera roles for fall and spring sports. Um, I do tend to find myself more in an off-camera role. That's kind of more where I uh, fit best, I think. But it's fun to kind of venture out there uh, from time to time. So you were, um, so, I mean, you've done, obviously, being doing it at news is similar, but not the same. But being, being um, you know, part of a broadcast, of the hockey broadcast in the studio before with other, you know, other aspects, you've seen how that all works, right? So you 
kind of, I think in your head, you probably had that good, had the mentality of understanding what you needed to do basically. Yes, I, I totally agree. It's similar. Definitely not the same. Pace is very different. Um, a lot more is on the fly. Um, so yeah, I, I think having been in the control room many times before was extremely helpful to kind of marry like those skills. Like I kind of knew, I knew what I was walking into. It wasn't exactly the same, but I can kind of transfer some skills that I had and go with it and go with God and make it work. <laughs> we made it work. <laughs> Uh, Natalie, something I did not mention at the top of the broadcast is you're also doing part-time producer work at uh, WMIT News Channel 13 in Albany. Um, is, and I, we talked about this before we, we started rolling. Did you have a special announcement that you wanted to, to throw out here? Break oh. some news on Throwing Bagels podcast. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's break some news on the Throwing Bagels podcast. Um, yeah, my offer letter just came in today uh, from WNYT to start there full time as a producer uh, after I graduate in May. So, so exciting. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent Congratulations. News. That is excellent news. Congratulations. Yeah, we couldn't be happier. Shout, <laughs> shout out to Roger Weiland, uh, WNYT, uh, uh, News Channel 13. Um, that's excellent news. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm excited. Wow, my my parents are gonna love this. Uh <laughs> now they gotta listen. See, That's now you, right. we we just gained two more listeners, guys. Look at that. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> producing on the fly. Like, guys, I announced something huge. I'm not gonna tell you what. We have to see. They already know, but I'll make them find out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Now they're gonna be scared. Now you now you scared them. Now you're gonna really scare them. I want to scare more viewers for you guys. So you're welcome. Thank you. Two more. <laughs> I feel like uh, we just had a baby. <laughs> Let it out. <laughs> what just <laughs> happened? <laughs> I don't have any cigars to pass around. I know, <laughs> seriously. Uh, um, and and Natalie, you're. You're currently news director at, at WTOP. So what led you to pursue that role? Ooh, good question. Um, well, let's see. So I'm a senior now. I started in the club as a freshman. Um, I knew nothing about anything journalism, anything broadcast TV, all very foreign to me, um, but it kind of piqued my interest and I'm happy I got involved. Um, and then I had some really great older mentors in the club that kind of really helped me uh, learn a lot quickly and encouraged me to keep learning. Um, and like when I made a mistake, they didn't like freak out. They were like, it's okay. This is a club. It's, you're fine. Um, so they really helped kind of put me on the track, um, you know, of kind of taking over that role. And then my sophomore year, uh, the news director was a senior and he talked to me and was like, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah. Um, and then he trained me from there. Um, and yeah, and then that summer going into having the news director role, I was uh, interning at WNYT. Um, so those skills kind of helped me. And then um, this is my second year in the role. Um, I loved it and I didn't want to let go of it. So I kept it. Uh, and yeah, here we are. Uh, Jolie, you're the uh, the VP of finance for WTOP. Are, are you looking to, to do broadcasting or are you trying to get into the business side of the business? Um, definitely broadcasting. And if broadcasting doesn't work out, I'll move to the business side, I guess. I'll do some <laughs> sales. I'll see what you they be the first. No. Nope. Yeah, you know, it happens. It's all good. I will say something really fun fact that I was thinking about yesterday. Natalie was the first person I met in WTOP um when really? I came here last year. Yeah. Uh, she was the first person I met. She was really like welcoming. Oh, it was so awesome. Yeah, right. News director welcoming. Um <laughs> it was so nice though that I could meet her and it's just now we're working, we've been working on this project for the yeah. whole, yeah. We have the same birthday. And we also have the same birthday. <laughs> oh, look at that. Wow. How about nice. that? Awesome. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I had to say it was meant to be, and it really is. So just love us. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Yeah. BFFs forever, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is our, this is, this is our standard final question. If you've ever, if you have listened to our, to our podcast before, you may have heard it before, but we have two questions. Okay. Very serious questions. Okay. Totally serious. When you go to the dining hall, what do you put on your chicken patty sandwich? And do you like the chicken patty sandwich? Let's start it that, that way. Are you a chicken patty sandwich fan? I don't what, like what do you what do you put on it? I'll say it right now. I don't oh like the God. chicken patty. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the first time ever the on Sacramento the Sacramento Jagles podcast. We might have to cut all of her stuff out of this podcast. We're editing yeah. it out. 
Yeah. yeah, we're editing that. Wow. Like, <laughs> okay, Jolie, thanks for that. Jeez, Natalie, I hope you're uh, I hope you're uh, a little bit better with this answer. Yeah, don't worry. I'm a big <laughs> Patty fan. I don't Yay. Know. <laughs> I don't live on campus anymore, so I don't go to the dining hall, but mm. I'm the chicken patty the most from living on campus. Take I'm, mine. I'll take <laughs> <laughs> Me and my friends used to like run to the dining hall like little gremlins and just grab our chicken patties and be so happy um, i was <laughs> you know you know come on <laughs> um get it lettuce tomato honey mustard Ooh, honey mustard. Okay, honey mustard that's, that's i think that's the tasty. first honey mustard we've ever yeah, heard i think we've so. ever heard. that sounds tasty actually um, yeah and second part of the question is i don't i'm Joey may not like this one either so you know who knows <laughs> but we're gonna go for it anyway Sub shop. Do you like the sub shop? And what's your go-to sub? Yeah, I ate it last night for dinner. Yes. <laughs> you guys. Jolie, Jolie doesn't like it. I could already see it on her face. Yeah, no. All right. Um, I only had it once and okay. um it, I had the Al Broker. Ah, okay. <laughs> it was, okay. It was it, it's a seven out of ten, I think. That's not bad. Uh, it's not, that's bad. not bad. That's a passing grade. Right. <laughs> don't don't tell Al Roker that. Yeah. 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 But you know. He was our professor last semester or last year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you yeah. took his class, his uh, his online class. Yeah, on air yeah. performance. Yeah, yeah, pretty go cool. cool. Um, there's a lot on the L Rover sub, so I understand not like loving that one. Yeah. Which one should I get next time I go? I mean, hey, cheeseburger all the way. Cheeseburger sub, absolutely. Can't Is that your sub, there. Natalie? Is that the cheeseburger? Oh. I do like a, I'll do like a custom like little okay. thing. I last night I got grilled chicken, cheese, American cheese, tomato, lettuce, mayonnaise, and like cooked peppers and mushrooms. Hmm. It was delicious. I have I like to say, it. sounds good. Um, sounds good. I like it too. Yeah, but you gotta, I'm, you got, you gotta make sure you tell them though, like light on the lettuce and other vegetables yeah. that you put on there because otherwise it's it's a sandwich full of vegetables and less and like you know it's like i'll take a i'll take some meat with the rest of the vegetables that you just threw on top of it you know <laughs> especially the onions if you if you get onions oh. on your on your on your uh sub oh, no. make sure you say light on the onions because okay. they they heap them on no one's going to want to come near you after you eat them if you if you put too many onions on there oh god take we're taking notes <laughs> well take we, we should ask jolie what do you like yeah, is your, <laughs> what is your go-to? I mean, do you even do you even go to the dining hall or do you eat food? Is a better I'm question. There all the time. <laughs> I'm actually there all the time. I live on campus. I live in Fennell. <laughs> I lived in Fennell. Nice. Cooper, Cooper all the way. Um, what do I like? I like the salmon bowls. They have salmon bowls. They have salmon wow, bowls. you guys are fancy. I mean, jeez. jeez. <laughs> salmon. Yeah. I we like never. I don't even think we had uh, salmon in my four years of college. We they ever gave us salmon. <laughs> I don't think we had fish at all. Like I mean, <laughs> no, they gave us definitely. A, no, you definitely had fish because of of. Come on, Chris. I'm the Jew here, and I even know this. They dead during Lent. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Come on. You're right. They did That's have cod true. tonight. Like literally Ooh. tonight. Yeah. God. Um. What else do I like? Oh, they have like shrimp scampi. Yeah. Oh my god. They have a lot. <laughs> wow. What. What the hell is going on at this school? Holy crap. They're naming like the fan. You're like caviar. It's like yeah, I mean, caviar. I may as well have caviar. <laughs> no, we have, have caviar. We have had um better sushi bowls though. So they add like all of the um nori, you know, the seaweed. Yeah. So you could throw, like see um what is it? Sushi. Sushi. Yeah. Yeah, you can make your own sushi with the bowl. What? Come on. Seriously, this is ridiculous, man. This is I am pro. Did like, this school become a eighty eighty thousand dollar year of school that I don't know about honestly. all of a sudden? Oh, no, no, it's a no. Look, next week is filet <laughs> mignon <laughs> night. I, I mean, honestly, no, right? <laughs> Seriously, what? it's gonna be Kobe beef. Seriously, what? What a side of like fifteen thousand dollar asparagus. I mean, <laughs> good lord. With, with with shaved parmesan on it, <laughs> they gave us like cheap French fries and cheeseburgers. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Why cheeseburger, was... so I'm glad they don't do that for me anymore. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's us. <laughs> wow, man, you guys are fancy. Fancy. Well, fancy. apparently not Natalie because she lives off campus. Say, 
<laughs> you guys use that lightly. Like <laughs> tonight, I think I have maybe like two pieces of Tyson chicken in the bottom of like a freezer burnt bag. And, <laughs> and that's dinner. Like you guys is Jolie. <laughs> that, now that sounds like college right there. Yeah, that's Jolie is right a there. high roller. Yes, sir. That's it right there. <laughs> right now. <laughs> don't get Excellent. don't get used to it, Jolie, because once you live by yourself, you're not going to be living like that anymore. No, that's no true. caviar on top of your salmon. <laughs> great oh my gosh well jolie and natalie it's been an absolute pro- uh, pleasure having you on and again congratulations on an excellent broadcast the all first female broadcast uh and wtop history um thank you so much for joining us thanks for having us yeah, uh, one one more thing um, sorry, I meant to say this a minute, but I got all distracted by these by this <laughs> all this food talk that we had. <laughs> um and this this I mean it sincerely. Um, so I have a I have a daughter, right? And I would probably not push her to go into broadcasting just from some from experience, but the fact that you guys did this, like this is something that I can say to her and I can show to her and I can say, listen, this is something that these women did where I went to college. You know, they did an all women broadcast. Um, you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it, right? And uh, you know, I would probably still like to tell her not to let her go on broadcasting just for the simple fact I've done it before. But if she did want to do it anyway, I would I would literally tell her to like watch this, you know, and show her like what can be done, you know, because obviously, you know, it was an all women broadcast and she could see something that you guys did. So I'm t- I sincerely mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. That's yeah. so nice. That was very touching and really true. And there's so many pieces to that. Like there's so many layers that I would love to talk about because Natalie and I, we have talked about this the entire like way that we've been going through this broadcast that there's so many reasons for why we're doing this. And I'm so glad that we are and we're pushing through the barrier that might be in our actual like forefront right in front of us, but we're not even paying attention to it. And we're just seeing past the goals that we have in mind and, this broadcast was our goal and we made it happen. So thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, thank you. That's the impact that we wanted to have for sure. Um, one of many reasons. And I think representation, another huge thing for us that's helped us both so much. Um, I think that we've both touched on. So yeah, thank you. So sweet. You're welcome. And again, we appreciate your time and, and congratulations once again. Yeah, thank congrats. You. Guys, we appreciate you having us on. Yes. We're so happy. So first much fun. First students on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks yeah. for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you. And that was a special episode, bonus episode of Throwing Bagels Podcast with Jolie Santiago and Natalie Barden, uh, co-producers of the All Women's Broadcast, a play-by-play broadcast that was uh, done uh, this past weekend on WTOP in Oswego, covering the men's hockey game against uh, uh, Brockport when a 5-1 win, uh, a historic event, and also a historic event for the for the program as well with the 1,000th win in program history for the men's hockey team. Entirely appropriate that it would be the thousandth win in program history because uh, I think that it totally uh, was a phenomenal broadcast in front of and behind the scenes when I was watching it on YouTube, uh, and so they they deserve every ounce of credit that that is going their way, and uh, could not think of a better night than to call the the one thousandth win in team history. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was, you know, fabulous. Just, you know, the conversation was was great, you know, and just listening to them, listening to that, listening to them discuss, you know, how this all came about and who helped them and what they did was, you know, awesome. And I, I really meant what I, you know, what I said to them, you know, about, you know, having that, you know, some being able to show that to, to you know, people down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it's important that it's it's uh, opening up the doors to something even bigger. Uh, and hopefully, you know, they can do more broadcasts as an all women's production uh, and maybe not even limit it to hockey, get in some basketball games right. perhaps and, and and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. So I think that'd be mm-hmm. really cool. I, I hope, I hope that next step does happen sooner than later. And that'll do it for this special edition of the throwing bagels podcast. Uh, I'm Chris Daglas, Kevin and Jay. What an enjoyable podcast. It sure was definitely until next time. So long for now. Adiós.